Welcome to our webinar. I'm Dr. Tara McCannell at the Department of Ophthalmology at UCLA, and our topic today is going to be nevus of the eye. Could this mean cancer? Many people who know that they have a freckle of the iris or a pigmented spot or know of a nevus inside the eye have often wondered if this could be cancer or if this may become cancer. I'm hoping that today we may be able to answer some questions regarding why it's important to be monitored. At Stein Eye Institute, we do see a lot of people with ocular melanoma, even diagnosed small. And if caught early, the prognosis may be good. It is also very reassuring to know that your freckle or nevus is a benign condition. I encourage you to ask questions via social media here, and we'll do our best to answer afterwards. So what is a nevus? A nevus is a benign lesion, condition of the eye, and other terms that are used may be freckle, a spot, a lesion. And all these things refer to a benign condition. Let's have a look at some examples. So here is a pigmented lesion of the choroid, which is inside the eye. You can see the dark pigmentation, and you can also make out a few yellow spots on the surface. These are drusen and suggest chronicity. The lesion has been there for a while. Here's another nevus that is elevated as opposed to flat and it also has the yellow spots or the drusen on the surface. Over here is a nevus in the front of the eye, of the iris, and you can see that there is a little bit of pigmentation in the spot of concern. Finally, we have a flat nevus which is next to the optic nerve, which is where the neural connections of the retina come in and help us see. And this lesion is flat and not causing any distortion of the inside of the eye. These are all examples of a nevus. How do we discover ocular nevi? Most of the time, nevi do not give a person any symptoms, and they're found usually on a routine eye evaluation. Many times when we visit the eye care provider, there may be photographs performed of the eye, and many times these reveal unusual spots that get further evaluated. Anyone who has been to an eye care provider may be offered to have pictures of the back of the eye and may be familiar with this sort of a setup. And I think the reason we're seeing more of this is because this is a fairly straightforward examination for a patient to undergo. The pupil does not need to be dilated and a picture like this provides a significant amount of information of the inside of the eye. Here's an example of a spot that was found by such a photograph. You can see the pigmentation that the arrow is pointing to. This is a nevus. This is another patient who had a pigmented spot. Again, this is one of those photographs that capture much of the back of the eye. And it's important to realize that this is actually not a nevus, this is a melanoma. So photographs taken of the back of the eye are helpful for identifying things that are abnormal, but they may not be helpful in providing the diagnosis. This particular patient was monitored for over a year before we saw them in diagnosed melanoma. Here's another example of a patient, and you can see the tumor in the periphery here. Because of the slight distortion of coloration, it doesn't appear pigmented. In fact, it looks sort of yellow on this photo. But this person had a photo taken about a year before and was told she had something unusual in the eye and was told not to be concerned. However, as time went on, her lesion grew. So this leads us to the question of, could my nevus actually be cancer? Oftentimes, when someone says, you have a freckle in your eye, don't be concerned, the diagnosis is correct because, as in our previous examples, a nevus has very benign characteristics that most eye care practitioners are able to distinguish. However, sometimes the diagnosis of a benign nevus may not be correct and the person may actually have a small melanoma. A person may also have a benign nevus in their eye which has been there for many years. But we still recommend that this be monitored because a benign freckle or spot of the eye 
can slowly change over time, just like an unusual freckle on one's skin can turn into a melanoma. What are the features of a lesion or a spot in the eye that has become a melanoma or that may be worrisome for melanoma? Any nevus that is elevated or has some sort of measurable thickness by imaging test must be monitored closely. Those nevi or freckles are at a higher risk of turning into a melanoma over time. Any nevus that is associated with some activity, and by activity we often see fluid or leaking of the lesion. When a lesion such as this has leakage occurring and we see fluid, there is a very high risk that this may be turning into a melanoma. So let's talk a little bit about small ocular melanoma or small choroidal melanoma. And this is a very controversial area it, even amongst ophthalmic oncologists who see a lot of patients with melanoma and nevi because sometimes in borderline cases there is not absolute agreement on whether a spot may be benign or actually be a melanoma. So what is a small melanoma? Most of the time we consider small melanomas to be less than 2.5 millimeters in thickness or height. This is an example of a patient with a small melanoma. Usually, small melanoma are found in the macula, and that's the center of sight, as you see in this picture here, because they're detected because the tumor actually starts to distort the retina and cause symptoms which bring a patient to attention. Another reason why small nevi are often found here is because this is directly straight into the back of the eye and the easiest area to detect on a dilated fundus exam. The traditional approach of treating a small melanoma actually is observation rather than immediate treatment. And the question is why would we not definitively treat a melanoma when it is small at the outset? And I've thought about this and there are some reasons why many ophthalmic oncologists may recommend observation only. One of the things that is true is that the risk of the cancer spreading or metastasis is low. We know that the smaller the melanoma, the lower the risk that a patient may develop spread of the cancer. So a lot of people feel that, well, these are low risk cancers, we don't necessarily need to treat them immediately. Another concern is that there is worry that treatments for melanoma may blind the eye. That is true. We do use radiation to definitively kill the cancer cells of the melanoma. However, in our approaches, we usually only require a small amount of radiation to treat a small melanoma. There are some traditional radiation protocols where more radiation may be used, and certainly a lot of radiation in the macula or the center of the vision can harm the vision. Finally, treating a small melanoma in the macula may be challenging because we actually have to get to the very back of the eye. However, this is not a concern or a challenge at a center where there is a lot of experience treating melanomas. Let me share with you an example. This is a 41-year-old female who was found on diagnosis to have a small melanoma and I've circled the melanoma here so that you can see it's slightly elevated, it's pigmented, and this lesion was, leak, excuse me, was leaking fluid. And she had seen a specialist who recommended that we need to wait for the tumor to grow to three millimeters to meet the criteria before we can consider it a melanoma and offer treatment. I think that things are changing now as we realize in medicine that early detection results in early treatment and better outcomes. So why would we want to treat? And we strongly feel that when we find a melanoma and it's small and early, people do better. The smaller the tumor, the less the radiation is needed to destroy the cancer of the eye. And less radiation means less ocular side effects, less vision loss, less problems in the eye due to the radiation side effect. Also, allowing the tumor to grow may worsen the prognosis for the patient. And that is because there is a direct correlation with tumor height 
and the ability of the cancer to spread. So we don't want the tumors to grow bigger than they are at their initial presentation. And also from a biological standpoint, we know that as tumors are, left, are let to grow, they acquire more malignant genetic markers within the tumors themselves that may increase the propensity of the melanoma to spread in the body. So what do we do when we see someone with a nevus or something suspicious that we want to keep an eye on? We evaluate people for growth and we do that by a number of tests including ultrasonography where we can check all of the dimensions of the lesion at the visits. We look for any increase in activity of the tumor and I mentioned before leaking fluid is one of them. So for example we can see change in activity by a change in the pattern of the ultrason ultrasonographic features within the tumor itself and sometimes we can see an increase in subretinal fluid that signifies that this benign spot is starting to change. And we use our imaging studies and clinical examination to help us. Ideally, it's wonderful if we can catch something like this before the tumor actually grows so that we can treat the patient early. Let me share with you an example of another case. This is a 63-year-old male who was found to have a pigmented spot in the macula. He was seen by his optometrist and referred to our center. You can see the pigmented spot and there is some orange coloration within it. So it looks pretty suspicious. At the time of his visit, he had an OCT, which stands for Ocular Coherence Tomography. And the scan was taken through the lesion itself. And I put that up here. This indicates the lesion itself and over here you can see the overlying retina is slightly disturbed and distorted. There may even be a little bit of fluid there based on the black spaces. Two weeks later we repeated this and you can see that there is an increase in the fluid overlying the tumor itself. So this person actually had a small melanoma which he has had treated at this time. This is another example of a patient who was found to have a flat pigmented spot in the eye. And although we encourage people to be seen on a regular basis, he did not come back. And six years later, unfortunately, was found to have a large melanoma that grew from this spot. This is a rare example, as the majority of flat nevi do not turn into melanomas like this. But this underscores the importance of having periodic eye examinations by an eye care provider and to alert the physicians if there's any change in symptoms. So I'd like to summarize. Small ocular melanoma must be treated early in order to maximize a person's vision and to reduce the chance of mortality from the cancer possibly spreading. It is important to have the correct diagnosis to ensure that the follow-up and treatment is appropriate. And finally, at our center, we recommend that all ocular nevi be monitored indefinitely. Thank you very much. I welcome you to ask your questions via social media, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you. So this is our, uh, one of our questions from someone in our audience. I know that I have an eye freckle. For how long should I continue with the annual examinations? We recommend that people continue indefinitely to have the eyes examined. At the examination, there are other things that can be monitored in addition to the nevus that has a rare chance of changing. A person could have their vision monitored, the intraocular pressure can be checked, and a once a year ocular examination is probably a good recommendation for most individuals. I've had an eye freckle for a long time, but it's never posed any problem with my vision. Should I get it checked by an eye doctor? We recommend at least a thorough examination before we continue to monitor on a less frequent basis. A final question, is choroidal nevus hereditary? Most intraocular nevi are not hereditary, but we do see that a person who may have a lot of freckles on their skin may be less 
pigmented, this person may have less pigmentation as similar to many family members who may have less pigmentation. So freckles may seem to run in the family, but we don't find family members with, with if a person has a freckle in their eye, their siblings do too. It, it is not as predictable as that. Thank you very much.